In Roseland, Alice knows how important a neighborhood school is for kids with special needs. Her daughter, Ariana, is one of them. Two years ago, Ariana and her cousin were shot while jumping rope. Ariana survived a gunshot wound to the head, but still suffers physical and psychological trauma. Her cousin didn't make it. You got kids that come up to her and say, that's why you and your cousin got shot. That's why your cousin did. Just cruel. The school that they trying to send her to, is that's where they from. I can't send her up there. If Ariana's school is closed, she could come face to face with the family who shot her and murdered her cousin. I got to walk past all this and go through all that, then go home and study. How many hours I'm going to have to study and worry about my house getting shot up? Well, I'm going to study it on the floor with a flashlight, you know, and I'm, and I'm eight, nine years old. You know, it's sad. Three people got shot last night right up the hill. It's just crazy. It's one, the first hot day come, here comes the shoot. Lee's dad went to Fanger High School in the 80s with Eric Wilkins. Both are veterans of Roseland's brutal gang wars and have survived shootouts. Lee Sr. lost his leg. I remember the first day he got shot. I was down going on 10. Like, hey, my mother, she's screaming, like, get up, get up. Yo, daddy shot, yo, daddy shot. I was dropping my son and two of his friends off yesterday, and they was shooting. I'm just dropping them off. Pit. As I'm easing on the break, get out. Boom, 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 boom. That could have been my last time dropping them off in everything. Principal Dozier planned a peace march to make a statement, but she postponed it over safety concerns. She consults Big Lee and Eric on whether to reschedule it. And we were trying to do this walk. Did Lee tell you about it? Like out, like an actual walk out, like come outside with the whole school, go down that way and kind of come to do a little march or whatever. And then you know they were shooting right over on this corner over here. Right. So we had canceled it for the time, postponed it really. Um, so we're thinking about doing like in the next couple of weeks. If we're going to do a march, we got to have to break them clicks up. We can't let them walk together. My main thing is just ensuring that, you know, Everything is safe. Yeah, it doesn't matter what time of the morning it is. Damien joins a large population of wheelchair bound Chicagoans. Some of them refuse to slow down. 20 say you don't get it. 20 say you don't catch it. Oh, she gave you luck, man. Eric Wilkins knows firsthand what it's like to be paralyzed by bullets. We come together and we challenge each other to be at the top of our game. In the Soldier Field parking lot, Eric returns to the National Wheelchair Softball Tournament, where he's been MVP two years in a row. Dig, 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 dig! dig. Push, 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 push. I got both the MVPs, the one from New York and the one from Chicago last year. I'm trying to get the MVP again this year. After I got shot, I stayed in the hospital like five, six months. It had me stop and look at myself. And I didn't like who I had become. Eric survived the brutal gang wars that plagued the far south side in the 90s. Hey, how you doing today, sir? All right. Before my injury, I lived my life in the fast lane, you know, selling drugs, you know, carried a pistol, partying all the time. Didn't really care if tomorrow came. I was a gang affiliate. You know, it wasn't no boys and girls clubs, so that was my fraternity. I didn't know how much I was really hurting my community. My name is Eric Wilkins. For guys who don't know me, I run a foundation called the Broken Wings Foundation. After well, taking three bullets in 1999 and becoming partially paralyzed, he turned his life around and started Broken Wings, a program to help shooting survivors. My man got shot in front of me. And he passed away? Yeah. Some just pulled up and just started shooting. He died instantly. I ain't get hit at all. You know, in the 80s, my, my uncle was put in the wheelchair. He got shot and put in the wheelchair. In the 90s, I got shot and put in the wheelchair. In the double O's, my son got shot and put in the wheelchair. It's the teens now. Man, I'll be down if my grandson get put in the wheelchair. Somebody got somebody to gotta draw the line. Eric graduated from Fenger High, where settling conflicts peacefully can save lives. People want to label our kids as thugs, hooligans. They're just kids, man, caught up in the system. They're losing their dreams. 
they're losing their hope. And when you got to go to a funeral and you got to watch your friends die, and you watch your friends die and you watch your friends die, it's just, it's, it's overwhelming. Police Superintendent Gary McCarthy said he knew his department would be tested this summer, and tested it was on Labor Day. A bullet hole in the front window, a gut-wrenching reminder of the shooting last night that took the life of 16-year-old Maurice Knowles. He was shot in the chest as he sat on his front porch on 105th and LaSalle. It's crazy. Man. It's sad, and I tell him every day, watch your back, stay out of trouble, you know, try to do what's right. But they getting chased, they getting shot at. What they supposed to do? Maurice knows he was a kid. You know, young boy, 16 years old. Eric watched Maurice grow up. Now, he tries to comfort his family and friends. To be totally honest with you, it ain't even really kicked in with me. It's just senseless. <laughs> I knew Maurice for 16 years. I love These kids having their parents, they scared to come to school. School? I love school. But I can't walk to school or get on the bus to school. You never know what'll happen. Father God, we are gathered here tonight for Maurice, praying for his soul. We are a strong family, and we will make it through. Everybody on edge. So if it if it if it trigger off in between here, man, won't nobody be able to come outside. Yeah. After the memorial, some of Maurice's friends head to a party down the street. Eric worries things could spiral out of control. I go out and hit the blocks on these hunters and I try to defuse the problem. If it means me putting putting my life on the line for it, I'm going. Everybody know it out here. Oh, that's on the little girls from up in here. They coming over here. This ain't that type of card. Man, your business, man, your business. It's bone in their company. Times like this, even a little jealousy could spark a gun battle. Uh, Get this. Just come down and have a nice day. What's nope. coming? Hey, stop. Y'all stop. Hold on. Air tries to break up the fight. What's that, Jim? No one's listening. Police arrive, gunshots scatter the crowd. And after a grueling stay in the hospital, Damien's finally well enough to return back home to his son. He faces so many obstacles to his recovery. What up, bro? Eric's been down that road before and offers his support. You picture yourself walking. Yeah, I know I can. I got to. I got to, man. I got two kids that need me to walk. They ain't, they ain't walk. They ain't walking yet. I hope I hope I beat them to walking. OK, that's what's up. And how many times did you get shot? I got shot six times. Man. I could have been dead. Yeah, I look at it like this. When I first got put in my chair, it was just time for me to sit down. Instead of me going to, going to jail, I ended up sitting in a wheelchair. Cause that's what God was probably trying to let me know, man, just slow down. And I wasn't listening. And it took for a bullet to hit me for me to sit down. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth nothing. Just blocks away, the shooting continues. Chicago police start another week of trying to put a stop to gunfire on the streets of Chicago. This weekend saw nine people die, including man. a teenager, 20 years old. Tiff attack going back and forth. You know, and all young guys. Nobody over 30. Days after Maurice Knowles was murdered, there was another shooting that appears to be retaliation. Eric knows the temptation of revenge. I actually had a chance one time with one of my friends. We caught up with some of the guys that had something to do with it. The young boy couldn't have been no more than 16, 17 years old. And, and, and the devil was like, hit him, hit him, hit him. 
But a calm came over me, man. I ain't want to hurt nobody, no. Um, I realized that that wasn't for me. So I just said, man, I'm through. Maurice was just 16. Word on the street is, he got killed by a rival clique over a stolen gun. yesterday afternoon blocks from his home and minutes from this very parish. Another homicide. This time, it's 14-year-old Tommy McNeil, who was one of Maurice's friends. Eric has watched these kids grow up, and he joins Big Red in pleading with them to change their lives before it's too late. You can't do that no more. That's a decision you gotta make. You got it in you, man. I seen you change. Big Red's son also was friends with Maurice. And she's terrified he could be next. Yeah, in and out the house, running with your friends. Your friends is dying. As you can see, that you done had three of them to die within a week and a half period of time. I mean, you done tried the street life, try to change. I've been trying to stop doing all that stuff that she talking about. Because I see what's going on out here. I feel like that could have been me. I, you never know. It's hard for me to see y'all out here. I see Bone face, I see Tommy face, I see Maurice face. They all on Facebook together. Tommy and Maurice go, and Bone the only one still standing. What's gonna happen next? Is he gonna be next? I love Chicago. Downtown, street lights. Man, it's bright. Man, like anything's possible. Come out here, it's like it's every man for himself. They took the neighbor out the hood. You know, so there's no longer neighbors, just a hood. I just push through. I'm gonna push through. Jesse Clark, George Anderson, Frederick Taylor. We gotta stand up and be neighbors. We can no longer point the finger and say it's not my kid. We gotta be involved, we gotta be hands on. We all gotta say, I will be my brother's keeper. Denise Warfield, Kendrick Wright, Kevin Ambrose. On these hot summer nights, Tensions frequently boil over. Hoping to keep things cool, Charles returns to his old neighborhood, Roseland, with another street soldier, Eric Wilkins. This just like this just like a third world country, man. Up through here, you don't have anything, ain't got no means of getting anything, so you'll do anything. This memorial shows all the people who've been killed in this area. Well, I created the memorial tribute to young people killed by violence because I was tired of going about getting them to stop the violence through marching, meeting, rallying. It was not working. It's 376 stones in there that we're losing all these young people. They're the perpetrator and the victims. And somebody's got to take notice. It was here in Roseland that Barack Obama started as a community organizer and eventually launched his political career from the south side of Chicago. Hello, south side. We know there have been too many mindless acts of violence in our communities. We grieve for the children who've been taken from us. Too much promise has been lost. President Obama won. I, along with millions of others, just got so hopeful. I believe so. You know, and I don't think that was phony. I don't think that was phony. I, I think he went in there believing he could do it. I wondered why he never came back, because he's a legend here in Roseland. Come back and organize again. But this time, you've got all the power in the world to organize. Come back. 
Back in Chicago, Eric Wilkins knows all sides of gun violence as an ex-gangbanger who was shot and paralyzed 10 years ago. And the work you do is so critical because you're engaging people right at the point that they may have a loss or be have a, a loved one that's hurt. Since I got injured, I care about a lot of things and I can feel the pain that a person has. Eric was told he would never walk again. He defied predictions and then created a refuge for others paralyzed by gunfire. It's called Broken Wings. Eric also offers support to families of victims like Tasha Bush. This is Eric where he was laying there. They couldn't get all the blood off the ground. And he had just completed his freshman year at Miles College in Alabama. And on May 26, a group of friends gathered together. It's Memorial Day weekend. They came outside of the house. They're standing on the sidewalk. And somebody came down the block and just shot up the whole block. I can't say I feel you, because I ain't lost my, I ain't, I ain't lose, I ain't lose my. All I can say is I'm going to stand with you, you know, and I'm tired of what's going on. We are under siege. And for us to be completely ignored, when is he going to get a moment of silence? What makes those victims in Aurora, Colorado, or wherever it is, better than my son? Or the other 43 people that were shot that weekend? We as a people, we got to stop. We got to stop. We just got to say enough is enough. I think of him every single minute of every single hour, of every single day. He never leaves my mind. Letting Tasha know that I'm out there, you know, and I got her back. It lets her know that she's not in this boat by herself. You're not alone. Wow. The pain regarding the loss of my son, it never goes away. It never goes away. Never. In Chicago, a group assembles to discuss politics and how to overcome the violence plaguing their community. Is anybody in the room uh, law enforcement? Do we have any police in the room? OK, there's no police in the room. Do we have any politicians, senators, state reps? All right, so those are the conditions that some of you asked because you want to have an honest conversation tonight. I want to talk about politics, right? And we can, people can feel the way they want about the president because I ain't here to sway nobody on who to vote for. I know who I'm going to vote for. I don't care about the politics. We got more murders in Chicago than in Iraq. They're calling this Chirac. This is where we live. I lost my son in 2006. I said, okay, we got a black president, and I've been looking for that change, and that was, that was my hope. My sister and my brother were shot within a four-month period by the same group of kids. You know, the kid that shot my son 14 times, he stood over my son and kept dumping on him. It's like a dirty little secret, our violence problem. Oh, I have gotten that. Nobody wants to touch it. It's